This video is sponsored by PCB GoGo. Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new video. Today it's once again all about our tiny dual resonant salt state teleco. In my last video I introduced you to my new circuit. With this we fixed two big problems. First, that we make sure that the DRSTC runs more or less in zero current switching mode. And second, that we get a fast gate signal to minimize switching losses. If you're not up to date yet, check out my last video first. We can't do much with the schematic by itself yet, we have to build it too. I used the program EagleCut to create the PCB for the schematic and order it from the PCB manufacturer PCB GoGo. Five days after ordering, the PCBs were already on my doorstep. They make a very good impression and I really like the quality. In addition, the PCB is very compact. I have now collected all components together. Looks like a lot, but it's quite simple. Now we have to solder. And done. That took about 30 minutes now. The finished PCB looks good, but does it work? We will now test the functions step by step. This is not difficult, the only thing we need is a function generator and an oscilloscope. First we have to connect the power supply to the board. We do that with this PTR connector. Because we have an 18V voltage regulator on the PCB, the input voltage should be higher than 18V. Preferably 20 volts, even 30 would be fine. The current will not exceed 2 amps. If we now turn on the power supply, the LED in the front of the voltage regulator should light up. At the jumpers in front of the voltage regulators, we can also measure the voltage. 18 volt works, 12 volt works and 5 volt works too. Very good. Now we test the feedback. For this we have to connect a ferrite core with about 80 turns to the jumper for the feedback. We will now call the small transformer just CT, which means current transformer. Normally the lower end of the secondary coil is fed through this CT, but for the test we will lead a 50 ohm resistor through the core and connect our function generator to it. The value of the resistor is absolutely uncritical. Now we make the following settings on the function generator. We need a sine wave signal with a frequency of 300 kHz. The amplitude of the signal should be set to maximum. In my case this is 20 volts. If everything works now, a signed signal should go into the 74HC14. We can measure this at leg number 13. Ha, <laughs> very good. At the output of the 74HC14 we should now be able to measure a nice square wave signal. The output in our case would be leg number 10. So the feedback works excellent. Next we test the function of the driver ICs. For this we bridge the jumper named CV. CV means continuous wave. By bridging the jumper the enable pin of the driver ICs is connected to 12 volts. Now the output of the driver is permanently on. Perfect for our SSTC. The feedback signal now goes into leg number 2 of the two ICs. If everything works as it should, we measure at leg number 6 and 7 a clean square wave signal with a higher amplitude than at the input. At the UCC 37321 the square wave signal should be inverted. This looks like this. The two signals then each go into a MOSFET push-pull stage. Now we only have to measure the output signal of the two stages. We do that with this PTR connector. The gate drive transformer will be attached to this connector later. The signal should be a square wave signal again but the amplitude is higher. If we want to test the driver under load, we can for example connect a 10 ohm load resistor to the output of the push-pull stages. Don't be scared, it can get very hot. Last but not least, we want to test the circuit in the interrupt mode. For this, we remove the bridging of the CV jumper and connect a signal from an interrupter to the int jumper. The signal at the load resistor should now no longer be continuous, but interrupted. In addition, the load resistor no longer heats up significantly. Our driver is now ready for the next step. With this procedure you can easily test all drivers which are based on secondary feedback. 
Yes guys, I know that was all a bit more complicated again. But you don't need much knowledge to build a small Tesla coil with big lightnings. I try to give you the necessary knowledge so that it works for you. This brings us to the end of the video. I hope you really enjoyed it. If so, like the video, subscribe my channel, support me on Patreon and then we will see us in the next video.